unbelievable demonstrations of different modalities that could be either layered on, exposed, not exposed on, uh, on exhibits at the museum. I think they're pretty awesome. Our, our, uh, our charter, our homework assignment, was to try and think about the entire range of users that might ever walk through the door, try and distill all of their needs, <laughs> just like that, uh, and then uh, uh, figure out the types of to figure out the types of questions that you want to uh, ask in a sort of interview, maybe an electronic interview, to try and capture what those needs are in the fastest way possible, and then use that data somehow maybe attach that information to that user, glued to the glued to the hip as they wander around the museum, come up to a uh, an exhibit and start using the exhibit. And automagically, uh, it, it just interacts with the user the way that user prefers. Hence the word personalization and preferences. So our group is a pretty amazing group. We have lots of different styles. Uh, we, some of us are, are down and dirty. I want to start building it now. Just ask them if they're deaf or blind. Uh, and, and, then, and then go along. And, uh, and others are, are really um, able to, to sort of step back and follow the, the process part of this and uh, be, very, be, be very organized about it. And uh, so we have, we have all of those in our group, and it's actually a metaphor for the people coming in the door because people have different styles. And um, so, oh, and as, as Mark said, of course, you all, you might have been worried about hurting your ears when, you when you were making your, uh, your demos. You might have been worried about hurting your ears or hurting your eyes or feeling something squishy and having a, a bad experience. And our, our, uh, we were worried about paper cuts. We killed some trees. We killed some trees over there, and uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. It felt, to me, it felt disorganized at the beginning. But others are going to talk about this. But I think there was a method to this, and it was it was actually pretty interesting. So I'm going to hand over uh, to Chris, who's going to tell us what that overarching process was. Uh, okay, so. I think there was some chaos, but I think it sort of went in the right direction because there's whenever I've done this type of personalization stuff, and we've done it now in a few different domains, one of the big ones being e-learning, you do have this sort of, whoa, is this really, really big? How can we handle all this? How are we going to implement that? How are we going to do these things? But there's concepts at the back of it that you sort of need to handle. And one thing that on the screen now is this great quote about 80% of the consequences of products and services the infrastructures around us are determined at the design stage. And really, we're not trying to answer all of those design questions in this group. We've had a number of very good and sometimes heated discussions about the fact that, well, you can't do that in a museum, and trying to understand that design space, and going up and looking at some of the exhibits, and saying that doesn't fit in our processes, we don't do it that way. But then there's also some good flexibility in there of, oh, well, maybe we can think about that, and maybe there are ways that we can approach it, and maybe there's a varied set of ways that we can approach it. If we can't replace particular content, can we direct people to content that's of interest to them, that matches their preferences, and you might have several different design solutions that you can then employ for those preferences. So we've tried to look deeply at this from sort of a universal design point of view, and I'm not going to go through the slides about universal design and UDL because we already talked about those. I'll just say that a lot of the stuff that we've, that we've covered is largely in the representation area, looking at the way that you present information to people and how to manipulate it. We have tried to touch a little bit on the interaction and expression side of it where people are putting stuff into it, and we've provided some suggestions about that, but that's certainly something that in an e-learning environment, we handle by having very large device models that talk about different types of off-the-shelf hardware that people use in their homes or in their office or in classroom environments. You guys don't have that. You are building your own bespoke ad hoc stuff very often, and we don't have that itemized list of device models. 
and typically we work with a set of user preferences and a description of their devices, and then we deliver content of different types to them. That, that's really different in this design space, and that was something that became apparent early on. And then there's some of the engagement aspects, which are really the big open questions about when you have to change the level of content for someone, the way the learning objectives are adjusted, if you're keeping the same learning objectives, do you direct them on a tour to different aspects of your exhibit as opposed to trying to adapt everything in one component? Do you send them to another component instead? And how do you do that based on their preferences? That's a huge problem that we've only just started to touch on in sort of you know, two and a half days. So we've tried to touch on that a little bit just to highlight that those problems are there. And certainly it was one of the more interesting sets of discussions. So the big question was, what, what is a personalized experience? And it really comes down to trying to do that representation, also that interaction component, how do people contribute their knowledge into the, the exhibit, but then also how do they actually engage and how do we provide different levels of things for them to do within our museum environment. What are the variables that we consider? And we went back to some of this literature that we have before and iterated out large amounts of the representation type stuff. Um, which we understand pretty well now, and then try to sort of think about a few things that you might do otherwise. Um, and then looking at things like physical design and cognitive processing design, those are really bigger problems. And one of the big gaps that we have is that for mobility items in particular for reach, the best thing you can do is sort of record, I need adaptations to reach, but in your exhibits you are largely doing adaptations to reach already. So for this museum, it doesn't make sense to ask someone for a preference, hey, do you want lower reach the exhibits that you go to, you're already providing that. In the same way you've made the choice in the Museum of Science to provide open captions, we probably wouldn't ask the type of caption question that we have in here, do you want captions on your videos? And you could think of even the setup process as being very modular and changeable depending on the museum environment and what are those policies that have been chosen. And that's, that's an interesting tension that's somewhat, uh, I don't think you can sort of answer in this situation right now. Further areas that we need to think about a little bit, we've got sort of supporting the cognitive processing and the learning objectives. How do we adjust content or how do we test if we built multiple versions of something that we could then present to people. Um, physical accessibility, personalized wayfinding around exhibits. Do you provide curated tours or do you allow people free choice in their tours? That changes their experience and their engagement. Um, and then things like bringing your own device to solve some of the problems of access physically to buttons and switches and touch screens and these things, a lot of people are bringing their own devices and can you customize controls of your exhibits to say a smartphone or something like that is sort of an interesting broader challenge that we can't solve in two days, I'm sorry, we really tried. So we'll just pass off to Mark and James and um, pass me the other mic there and I'll give one to James. This is our awesome prototype. And we'll pass it over to Mark. And this is all sort of just admittedly real wireframes and not been evaluated and not complete. Unlike everything else. Well, I do want to say, we evaluated ours for days. So, so we guys, you guys probably heard us over here because we were kind of loud. And I will say that when we got it all kind of where we thought it was, we ran every single persona through it and found that we failed a couple of times. And we actually went back and made some more changes. Oh, we're going to go through a couple of personas. We're not going to go through all because we don't have anything really cool to show you. But I just want to say, like, we, we don't think this is 100%, but I'm pretty good about it. It's, it's, it's on its way there. So. OK, great. So the concept was, as we were just talking about, that we had to gather like kind of user profile, gather this metadata, and then do something with it. The, the, the issue that we didn't solve, as was discussed, is like, how, what do we do once we get the data? And how do we actually and I'm sure there might be questions around that, but we'll hand it to the museum staff to kind of talk about that. But uh, So the idea being that you could likely either do this online at home or come to the museum and and uh, do it at a, at a kiosk in the initial, like, as you walk in. The other idea is, is that if this profile tool is generated, it can be put on something like open as, as exhibits and used by other museums across the world. So the idea that this, this could be used other places. So. We're just going to run through this. Um, so, oh, I don't know what's her name again? Uh, Addison. Addison. 
So we're going to run Addison through this here, this little demo, and why don't you walk us through? So I think it's safe. Oh, sorry. So I think it's safe to say when we read the personas. By the way, we may have made some assumptions about the personas that we didn't really have an answer for. So we're talking about preferences, and everyone's preferences are different. So just if you don't necessarily agree with the choices we've made, it's not that it's wrong, it's not that it's right, it's just that they're preferences, and these are not real people. So um, Addison is, she's deaf, so I was kind of the one who, tongue in cheek, said, well, why don't we just ask if they're deaf, and then we can just do things and direct them. But I mean, clearly I understood that we couldn't do that. But we decided that she's going to ask. She's going to ask when she's presented with this kiosk that she wants this information presented to her. So importantly, everyone gets you know is is here at the kiosk, and this is the first screen for everyone. Yeah. This is so. This is our home, our our, our pre home base because there's actually a home base after this. So she's going to pick ASL, and these actually work. We're really proud. And um, she's going to re read this really quickly, and she's going to decide. Well, I'm sound and captioning. This is what I'm interested in. So she's going to go sound and captioning. <coughs> Correct. Yes, but this would be presented to her, of course, in ASL. Yeah, well, it would be a, like a, a pop-up or a secondary screen that would would have this as well. And then there's also a, just as a point out, a stay in. Um, and then she's like, would I like to change the volumes for my exhibits? Well, that's not really important to her. She can't hear, so she's just going to say no. So she says no. So sound yeah, so caption is where she would go. Um, she wouldn't be presented this sort of the screen because our mock-up doesn't, we don't, we're not allowed to skip because we're doing it in PowerPoint. She actually would never see this. So, um, so she comes here and she goes, would you like to have captions for your exhibit? Yes. And then she gets to choose the size of the caption as well as the color of the caption because she may have something else that we might not understand and we want to present the captions to her in a way that is easy for her to read, so she can get the most engagement out of it. So she's going to pick that I kind of want a large, and I love yellow, I'm a girl, and that's really what I'm into right now. So I'm going yellow. And she's just going to say, done. She's done. She walks away, and now our done exits you out, so we have to go back in. And the point, the reason why we set this up is we were trying to find a way to quickly get one of our personas to engage. Now some of our personas are more complex, so they're going to have to spend a little bit more time in the kiosk. And that's why we started with her. She's in and out. She knows what she needs. Boom. She's gone. Now you can imagine that she